people in police custody believed to be connected to a morning bank robbery and shooting. Good evening. I'm Brandy Peterson. I'm Rob McCartney. Right now, police are trying to connect the dots between the incidents that happened just minutes apart. Big story live team coverage begins with KETV News Watch 7's Alexander Stone. Brandy, Rob, I'm here near 87th and Center. That initial call to 911 this morning involved a bank robbery here at the Bank of the West. But soon after, that investigation shifted just next door to this medical office where a shooting victim showed up needing help. A shooting victim leaves this small family practice on a stretcher after a bank robbery turns violent. He's a long standing patient of ours, and he said, I've been shot. And so we took him to the room, and doctor, you know, saw him at that time. Debbie Braun, the office manager at Suburban West Medical, hasn't seen a shooting victim in all her years at this office. But when a familiar patient walked in with what she describes as a gunshot wound to his upper thigh, Braun took action. And I made the call to 911, let him know that the shooting victim was here. A bullet hole could be seen in the patient's car, parked right outside. The gunfire apparently triggered by a bank robbery right next door. So that there was a robbery over there, and he tried following the, vic or the sh robbers to get the license plate to help out the cops, and he got shot in the process. Neighbors who know the victim say when it comes to helping police, the victim has a family full of law enforcement. His dad is a retired police officer, and his brother works for uh, the crime scene investigation. Tom Novak says his neighbor's decisive action after the robbery doesn't surprise him. He's the kind that would try to help somebody. He has probably very little uh, concern for himself when he thought he was helping someone else. That's the kind of person he is. Back at the doctor's office, Braun says the victim was in good spirits, even as he was taken to the hospital. He was talking, he walked in on his own, you know, so it was good. He was in good condition and talking and letting us know what all happened. The victim was taken from this doctor's office to Bergen, but he has since been released. Reporting live, Alexandra Stone, KETV Newswatch 7. Thanks, Alexandra. Hundreds of homeowners had a hard time getting in or out of the area as police investigated this morning's crimes. KETV Newswatch 7's Kyle Gravel was able to speak with several of them who witnessed a swarm of activity. Joins us live, Kyle. Yeah, and Swarm might be putting it lightly based on what we heard from people here or witnesses, I should say, earlier today. I'm going to jump out of the way. Omaha police is still on scene now. Kind of hard to see in the dark. They're kind of uh, looking through a couple of cars that ended up on scene here. That's at 85th and Lafayette. What was just a cool morning here near 85th and Lafayette quickly turned chaotic. What the heck? Like, it, it's a safe neighborhood. We've not had issues I mean that was Wendy Bradley's reaction after local police and federal agents stormed her neighborhood in pursuit of three suspects from the bank robbery at 87th and Center Bradley was home with her roommate Jessica Munderlow and Munderlow's two children ages two and seven she opened up the front door and there's police with assault rifles drawn across the street and we were told it's not safe stay inside so they went to the basement not taking any chances as police closed in on a house just across the street Munderlow told her kids to hide behind the washing machine and furnace and use some quick thinking to try and keep her children calm. So I got my boys a bucket of their Halloween candy, told them to eat as much as they wanted, and we were going to have fun, and this is super cool. Fears would be eased a short time later as the three suspects were taken into custody. About a block away, Michael Gaines describes what he saw from his porch. It blocked the street off. There were guys running around in camouflage gear, carrying automatic weapons, running up and down. Yeah, it was, it was a little scary. The scene shook up Gaines momentarily, but he praised law enforcement for getting the job done. They came in, bam, they took care of the situation. They got the folks out they needed to, to get out, um, and I'm all in favor of that. Now, not only was this neighborhood locked down earlier today, but for Westside School District, a lot of schools in the area, they actually locked down 10 of their 12 schools for a short period of time. Omaha police did give them the all clear, though, a little before noon. Earlier today. We're live tonight at 85th and Western. Kyle Gravlin, KETV News Watch 7. Thanks, Kyle. More breaking news at this hour. Police continue to work in another Omaha neighborhood near 24th and Laramore. At KETV News Watch 7's Jeremy Maskell is there live with the latest. Jeremy? And within the last 45 minutes, live out here at 24th and Laramore, 
I've seen about a dozen different law enforcement agents arrive on scene in about half a dozen different unmarked vehicles. This is a scene that police have maintained blocked off since about noon today. Now, since we delivered you a live update on KETV News Watch 7 at 5, we saw several different law enforcement agents suit up in vests before heading to that home in question. We also saw officers guarding the north side of this scene trying to de escalate a situation with the family we presume lives in this house. They have been screaming at times at police, swearing, upset about the amount of time they've been displaced from their home this afternoon. Now, right now, that team of investigators live here at 24th and Laramore, all of their attention is focused inside the home. We have seen them inside for about the last half hour. Very fluid situation, lots of developments here. We have at times seen uh, officers and sheriff's vests. We have seen FBI uh, agents around on scene for what purpose, we don't know. We have also seen paramedics here on scene. They left without anyone along with them. We are still waiting on updates from investigators, but we will bring you the latest on air and online as we get it. Reporting live at 24th and Laramore, Jeremy Maskell, KETV, Newswatch 7. Jeremy, thanks. Now, getting back to that initial bank robbery, police say it is part of a big spike in those types of crimes in the city. Police confirmed that this morning's was the 33rd bank robbery this year. Last year, there were six.